the best time of the year is officially here in Walt Disney World. Happy spooky season. Fam, Halloween season has officially kicked off in Theme Park World, and we are celebrating by attending the first Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party tonight at the Magic Kingdom. So I'm bringing you with me. We're going to see the parade, the fireworks, the Sanderson sisters are here. We're going to eat spooky treats. It's pumpkin spice cold brew time. It's officially my favorite time of year. Let's go. The wristbands are fancy this year. They're these little bracelets. Better that's easier for the cast members. Oh my gosh, it's my first Mickey pumpkin sighting of the season. I could cry, they're just so cute. Got my map, and now we're headed in to Halloween. Oh my gosh, Magic Kingdom at Halloween is the cutest. It's the cutest. They've got all the Mickey pumpkins. I love around Town Square here, how they have the pumpkin scarecrows wearing costumes of cast members. It just warms my soul. Here's that map I first picked up. This is going to be your guide to the party. They have a digital version as well in the app, but I find the physical map so much easier. It's going to have all of the entertainment show times for the fireworks and the parade and the different shows. It's going to let you know where there are characters. It's also going to let you know where there's tree trails, where to get your allergy friendly treats, which rides are open. So make sure you grab one of these and let's get to having spooky fun. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party runs select nights now through November 1st, and it is not all sold out by the time I'm filming this. Last year, pretty much every party sold out almost instantly. Now there are a few sold out, including actual Halloween night, but there are plenty of days still available. Tickets start at $119 and go up to $199 for adults, $109 to $189 for kids aged 3 to 9, and that just depends on which night you're going to. The party is between 7 p.m. and midnight. However, with your party ticket, you can get in starting at 4 p.m. to enjoy a few hours of the Magic Kingdom in its normal state. You don't need a park reservation to come in if you're coming in at 4 p.m. When you come in, you will get a lovely wristband. They've upgraded this year. They're fancy concert ones. And you will be given a trick-or-treat bag and be able to join in the fun. But if you have a ticket and you're already in the park before the party starts, starting at 4 p.m., you can pick up wristbands at distribution locations in Tomorrowland and Adventureland. You don't have to go out of the park and come back in. I always geek out when I see the Main Street cast members in their cute Halloween outfits. Happy Halloween! Thank you! It just officially feels like it's the season, especially when it doesn't feel like it's the season because it is the hottest week of the year. It's over 100 degrees right now. It's not exactly a fall aesthetic here in Florida, but you know what? We're going with it. All right, they're handing out trick-or-treat bags this way. I think this is so smart to send everyone down this back way. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, we're having fun. Got my trick-or-treat bag. And they have a few candies here they're giving out so you can get started. There are going to be trick-or-treat locations throughout the park as well. And they give out the good candy because this baby's sponsored by M&M Mars. So you can get Twix, Starburst, Three Musketeers, M&Ms, all kinds of stuff. And they give out full-size things right here at the front. In addition to trick-or-treating, where that is included with your party ticket, there are also specialty treats you can purchase around the park, which obviously we're going to grab some. There's also tons of attractions open. All your favorite attractions will be open throughout the party, which means there's going to be low wait times. I personally don't really ride attractions during these events because I want to focus on the specialty entertainment and food. But if you want low wait times, this is the time. There's even a special 6 p.m. virtual queue drop for Tron for party goers only if you want to try and ride Tron during the event. Now, while there are several party exclusive treats that I'm looking forward to, there are a few Halloween treats that are available now through Halloween, no matter what time of day you come, party or not. And there is one special Halloween treat that I think about every single day from the end of one Halloween season to the beginning of the next Halloween season. And we're going there first because we have priorities, friends. We're not getting in a three hour line to meet Jack and Sally. We're not getting in a three hour line to meet the seven dwarfs. No, no, we're going to Joffrey's Revive. <sighs> oh, man, that's good. They do have fancier pumpkin drinks at all the Joffrey's. They've got a pumpkin pie latte, which is their pumpkin spice latte. You can do it hot or iced. 
They have the pumpkin creme brulee game changer where they add stuff to the coffee, but the pumpkin creme brulee cold brew, it's not listed. It's just black coffee that's flavored with pumpkin. That's how I get it. It's perfection. You can find it at any Joffrey's location around Walt Disney World right now, not even just Magic Kingdom. And I will probably drink three to four hundred of these before Halloween's ever. All right, let's get going. Let's do other things. We are ready to party. Now, if you want a different pumpkin coffee, they have a themed one at the Cheshire Cafe. It's got pumpkin foam on top and sprinkles. I had it last year. It's delicious. Definitely recommend that as well for something a little more festive, but this, this is my jam right here. Now that we've got our delicious pumpkin coffee, it's time to head and look at some merchandise. We're headed into Star Traders, which is here in Tomorrowland. They're gonna check that I have a wristband. And it's a little pro tip to do your Halloween shopping in here versus the Emporium, because the Emporium is nutso right now. It's like Black Friday at a Walmart in there. And in Star Traders, they may not have one or two, a few things that you can find in the Emporium, but they're gonna have the vast majority of both the Halloween collection and the Mickey's Not So Scary exclusive collection. So without further ado, let's take a look. Let's start with this year's Hocus Pocus collection. We've got a Hocus Pocus fill and spectacular spear jersey, corksicle, pin, plushes, shirt, ears, Binks plush, nightmare Billy water bottle, mug, witch's hat, spirit jersey featuring the new characters from Hocus Pocus 2 because that's what everybody wants, t-shirt, different t-shirt. Now as a note, a lot of Hocus Pocus merchandise is available online and all the time, but anything that's branded with Villain Spelltacular, which is the Hocus Pocus show during the party is only available for the party. Now let's move on to some of the more general Halloween goodies. Got a few different collections, starting with the neon collection, which I'm obsessed with. You've got neon Crocs, neon sweatshirt, hat, blanket, tote, decorative Mickey pumpkin candle display in not one, but two sizes, t-shirt, ears, lounge fly, spirit jersey. We've also got some non-neon items like these Mickey pumpkin ears, light up necklace, light up bubble wand, different ears, different lounge fly, trick or treat bucket, hat with a cute little Mickey ghost, neon t-shirt, child neon t-shirt, smaller child neon shirt, tiny human sweatshirt, Mickey plush, mini plush, stitch plush, Mickey mug, countdown castle. We've also got some fun Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, a t-shirt, t-shirt dress, note cards, no idea, hoodie, blanket. Seriously, what is this thing? Water bottle, backpack, and lastly, we've made it to the Not So Scary exclusive merch. We've got an ornament, pin, child shirt, mug, pillow, spirit jersey, turvis. This will be the thing that breaks me into buying more merchandise. So I love a turvis, hat, and adult shirt. Now, I considered getting in line to meet the Winnie the Pooh characters because I think the Winnie the Pooh characters in their Halloween costumes is one of the top three cutest things in the world. But the line is already to here, and there's still like an hour, a little less than an hour before the party starts. There are tons of characters at the Halloween party. Most notably, the all seven dwarves are coming back this year. You can meet Jack and Sally. The Winnie the Pooh characters come out, typically as a foursome in their Halloween costumes. All the classic characters are dressed up as well. It is really fun. And some people spend their entire party meeting characters, which is great. But if I'm doing video and trying to cover as much as possible, I'm not gonna go wait in an hour long line to meet characters. That said, if there is a character that you desperately want to meet, and it is the Seven Dwarves, Jack and Sally, Winnie the Pooh, I highly recommend getting in line for them prior to the party starting. Typically Jack and Sally, who meet up in Town Square Theater with Mickey, start early, like before the party actually starts. You do have to have a wristband to get in line. The cast member today told me they started around 4.30. So if that is a must do for you, get in line for them as soon as you can get in. But also note, the cast member told me the line to meet Jack and Sally was three hours. So you would be spending the entire chunk of time prior to the party starting and a little bit of the party possibly waiting in that line. So it's just about what's important to you. The party has officially begun and therefore I have gotten some new snacks. These are both from Golden Oak Outpost in Frontierland. First up, the loaded sweet potato fries. These are sweet potato fries tossed in cinnamon sugar, topped with marshmallow cream, butterscotch chips, and toffee pieces. These are just for the party. This, however, the tombstone tart is available all day long. It's a flaky pastry filled with strawberry jalapeno jam topped with buttercream sprinkles and sugar spiders, AKA a spicy fruity pop tart. First up, the sweet potato fries. Five stars. 
No. Five jack-o'-lanterns. Those are delicious because I love sweet potato fries. They're definitely sweet because the sweet potato is naturally sweet. You've got that little crispiness from the, the toffee bits and the, and the chips, and then you've got the marshmallow cream on top, but it's still not as sweet as a lot of the stuff you're going to find around the party because it's a potato as opposed to like a cupcake as your base layer. I really like these as someone who likes sweet potato fries, nice big shareable portion. We're off to a good start. And here is the inside peak of the strawberry jalapeno spooky pop tart. Mmm. It essentially tastes like a strawberry pop tart and I don't want to brag, but I am a pop tart connoisseur along with Max and Alan since we have eaten, oh, there's the spice. Tastes like a strawberry pop tart until you get hit with that little bit of burn. I actually love it because I love spicy and I think it's unusual. The flaky pastry crust is delicious. It reminds me a lot of a Woody's lunchbox tart. I like this too. We are, we are off to a good start. I'm going to give this one also five pumpkins. So every other treat you got a lot to live up to but you have to like spice because there's definitely some heat in there. Anywhere you see those giant M&M inflatables, that's a candy spot for you. They move pretty quick, but I am lured by the sound of new entertainment. This year they have added a pirate band outside of Pirates of the Caribbean. So I'm headed to go listen to these jaunty sea shanties. The band was super cute. They played a few pirate themed songs and they recruited people to join the pirates. They're playing intermittently, no set time. So they may be playing throughout the day. I do want to point out that there are no live pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean this year, which is a little unusual. Previous years, they had real pirates in the queue and on the ride. They're not there this year, but there are overlays at Space Mountain, Mad Tea Party and Monsters Inc. Black Floor. And of course, Haunted Mansion is perfect this time of year but I am headed for another tasty snack inside Pecos Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. Here's all the goodies from Pecos that are special for Halloween. These are only available during the party. The candy corn milkshake. This is sweet corn soft serve topped with whipped cream and a sweet potato cornbread nugget. I had to try it because I loved the corn ice cream last year. And that's not back, but this is. Also, the cast member convinced me to get the bowl of wings. It's uh, bone-in piggy wings in, uh, with fresh jalapenos and tossed in a Coca-Cola cherry barbecue sauce. And then this is the Cajun burger. It is a Cajun spiced all beef patty with fried green tomatoes, a Cajun andouille dip, and a Creole remoulade on a black bun. I'm here with my friend Miss Wizarding World behind the scenes, and so we're tag teaming food so we can try as much as possible. First up, the milkshake. Woo! Well, if that isn't root and toot and delicious. Dare I say I prefer the milkshake to the ice cream cone because even though it's a million degrees outside and it's gonna melt, it's gonna melt in this cup, not down my arm. It definitely tastes like corn. So you have to like sweet corn. It's my Iowa farmer blood that gives me the sweet corn love maybe, but it's still sweet. It's still definitely a milkshake, but it's not gonna be as sweet as some of the other milkshakes and freezies and stuff like that. So I like it. I'm gonna try the little fritter too. I could kind of take or leave the fritter, which is surprising. That's part of the reason I wanted to get it. I really don't like the side that they dipped in frosting. It became too sickly sweet for me. It's also kind of crumbly. I want it to be a little moister. So the fritter's fine. It just tastes like cornbread kind of, but not very good cornbread. The milkshake is good though. If I were to describe this milkshake, I would say that it's like a corn tortilla and a vanilla milkshake had a beautiful and delicious baby. So I'm also giving it five jack-o'-lanterns, which is becoming a problem because it's going to sound like I'm giving everything five jack-o'-lanterns, but I'm sure I won't. The wings are good. It does throw me off that they call them wings and they're pork because, yeah. But they're hearty, they're meaty. There's definitely sweetness to the sauce because of the Coca-Cola and the cherry. And there's spiciness because I ate a full fresh jalapeno. They're not my favorite thing. That might be because it's 1,000 degrees outside, but I probably would skip these next time. But they're not bad, and they're definitely shareable if you want a savory. The piggy wings, I will award three and a half jack-o'-lanterns. They're good, but I don't think they're as fun or festive as some of the other things. But they're definitely shareable and meaty. And now, the burger. I actually like the burger more than the wings, which is surprising. I will say the patty is a little dry, which isn't 
helped by the fact that you've got fried green tomatoes on there, but the fried green tomatoes are really good. They're adding a nice crunch to it, a nice acidity to it, and then you've got a lot of that creamy and dewy sauce on there, which is helping. There's a lot of flavor to it. There's a little bit of heat to it. I like that more than the wings, although both are very, very hot. You should eat them inside if you get either one of these. That said, I do think you should try and eat your main meal before the party, so that way you can spend most of the party enjoying the entertainment and the sweet treats and riding rides, um, unless there's something savory that you really want to try. The burger I will give four jack-o'-lanterns. Also caught a few clips of the Cadaver Dans, that's the Dapper Dans Spooky Alter Egos. They play fun Western-themed spooky songs. They're always a highlight for me as well. Next snack stop, the Sleepy Hollow in Liberty Square. Picked up two things on the menu, the cinnamon funnel cake. This is funnel cake topped with pumpkin ice cream, pumpkin spiced caramel sauce, and finished with butterscotch. You know my pumpkin loving heart is excited about this one. This one I'm less excited about. This is the Headless Horseman Cupcake. It's a yellow cupcake topped with cream cheese buttercream, spicy Cheetos, and chocolate for some reason. All right, it's time for my semi-annual Disney cupcakes are the worst wrapper PSA. Find the seam. Rip down the seam. Spin. Acquire your cupcake in one piece. There's like lime jelly in it. I hate it. No pumpkin heads. Oh my God. I just confirmed. It is in fact lime filling. Lime and cream cheese and spicy Cheeto. It's also not a very good cupcake to begin with. It's structurally falling apart. No. Truly hoping this funnel cake redeems Sleepy Hollow for me. Okay, the funnel cake didn't totally redeem Sleepy Hollow. This isn't Dumb and Dumber right now, but it is much better than the cupcake. The funnel cake itself just tastes like a plain funnel cake. It doesn't really have a specific cinnamon flavor. The pumpkin ice cream is awesome. I wish I just had pumpkin ice cream. And of course the pumpkin sauce and toffee chips are nice, but I do think overall it's pretty dry. Besides the cupcake, this is definitely my least favorite thing I've tried. So I'm gonna give the funnel cake three jack-o'-lanterns. I wish it was higher because it's pumpkin, but got to be fair here. I give it credit for being massive, though, but I think it's not unique enough to get this over some of the other treats that are much more unique for the party. Popped over to the Haunted Mansion, which, as you can see, is quite popular, understandable, given its theming. But the mansion itself looks beautiful. The cast members look all spooky, scary. And there are ghosts in the queue, but you need to wait in the full queue, which is right now 50, five, zero minutes. A friendly mansion maid told me to come back a little bit later, maybe during one of the parades, and the line should be shorter. But Haunted Mansion, very popular this time of year, as you can imagine. Passing by the uber cute Winnie the Pooh meet and greet again. Their line is currently two hours. So again, if you want to meet characters, that you can, but that's going to be a lot of your day. Did see Anastasia and Gisela just roaming through Fantasyland, and I do also think I spot some of the Alice characters over by the teacups. They also have quite a long line. Bopped on over to Storybook Circus to see what I can find here. Now, first of all, in one half of the Dumbo queue, Mickey, Donald, and Daisy are meeting together. Well, you'd meet one at a time. Wait time right now is about an hour, so longer wait time, but you do get three different characters. This is also where you can find the seven dwarves who have returned after a hiatus of being around for meet and greets. This is a very popular meet and greet. I'm just going to see what the wait time is. I bet it's quite long. The super awesome cast member over at Storybook Circus let me know that it was going to be about an hour for the seven dwarves, which I don't think is actually that bad. But I'm going to keep bopping around and doing other things. He said they would probably cut the line off about an hour or so before the party ends. So if they're important to you, make sure you jump in that line. But I think I'm gonna get a cool Halloween magic shot now. Grabbed a couple of really fun magic shots over by the entrance to Storybook Circus. I have seen the one with the light stick before that looks like this, but I'd never seen this magic Mickey one like this. 
super cool. There's tons of PhotoPass cast members around the party doing character photos at some characters, as well as cool magic shots. Some are light effects like the ones I did. Some are like the magic characters where it looks like the characters in the picture with you. And if you've already paid for Memory Maker or have PhotoPass included with your annual pass, you get the party photos included. Here's the Halloweenified teacups. They have spooky lights and spooky music, but we are gonna keep spooking on to a dance party. The Disney Junior Dance Party to be specific. It used to be in Storybook Circus, but it moved into Cosmics. And the Zombies Dance Party moved over into Tomorrowland. Thanks so much for being for Wait. I had to leave the dance party because I'm not sure what's scarier, an adult alone filming the Disney Junior Dance Party or Fancy Nancy. Um, either way though, Disney Junior Dance Party is really fun if you've got little ones that like those characters because they get some fun dance and activity time with them. But you know what? I'm ready to go meet a character myself, the one that I make sure to meet at every Halloween party because it would be rude to come without saying thanks. Also, this is the popcorn cart that is home to the number one most in-demand item at the Halloween party, the Nightmare Before Christmas popcorn bucket. Okay, I lied. I was gonna go see Mickey right now because he doesn't have a long line, but I looked at the wait times and neither does Spooky Space Mountain. So I'm gonna go do that now. The first parade stepped off, so this is usually a pretty good time to ride things. I recommend watching the fireworks, then the second parade, and then one of the later stage shows, because that's after most people leave. Most people with young kids watch the first parade and the fireworks and then leave. So you can usually get a much better spot if you watch the second one. And during the first one is a good time to go do other things. Taking a look at the wait times right now, it's about 9.30. Well, for starters, Stitch, Elvis Stitch has a 45 minute wait. He's here in Tomorrowland. But as far as the actual attraction wait times, I'm gonna tell you the wait times as I go through the Monsters Inc. queue because one, it's a treat trail, and two, the monsters are telling jokes. They're telling Halloween jokes. But you don't have to sit for the whole show if you don't want to. You can just watch one or two jokes or just walk through and get candy. But this is definitely a good break from the heat. So we'll walk through here while we talk about the wait times at the attractions, because I know a lot of people come to these and want to ride a bunch of rides. So let's look at the wait times of your big attractions. Big Thunder 15, Buzz 5, Mansion still at 40, Jungle Cruise at 5, Meet Cinderella is 30, Mickey's only 15, Tin Princess Tiana 30, Peter Pan 35, Pirates 15, Mine Train 50, 5 0, Space 25, and so that's pretty good. If you're here for rides, which you could certainly have added in instead of some of the snacks I did, you would get a lot done. Yay, thank you. I wasn't gonna get any candy, not because I'm better than candy, but because I don't want to carry it around. But then the cast members were like, do you want a single candy of something? We've got coffee M&Ms. Yeah, I obviously want those. Hey everyone. How's it going? Good. Isn't it weird that I'm communicating through mind reading? Okay, I was here for a minute. Headed to ride Space Mountain now, which has a posted 25 minute wait. We'll see if it actually takes that long. Space Mountain is already one of my favorite rides in Magic Kingdom. And it ramps up even more so during Halloween because it is like so dark in there. It's darker than normal and they play a spooky soundtrack. So I'm super excited to ride it. This is one of the rides I prioritize during the party. Space Mountain has a 44, 44 inch height requirement and it is that roller coaster through the stars at night in the dark. You can't film on it anymore, so if you see footage ever from us, it's old footage, but I'm really excited right now. <laughs> oh man, I'm crying, I'm crying. Oh, oh wow. Deep Space Mountain, as they were calling it, that's what the cast members called it, is no joke. I was crying, I was laughing so hard. Somehow my earrings nor my eyelashes fell off. But if you think Space Mountain is thrilling normally, you gotta ride this version. It's basically pitch black. They don't do the tunnels or anything. And it's this like space odyssey, rocky kind of music. Oh, that was excellent. 
And now there's about 15 minutes till fireworks. So I'm gonna go find a spot. Just noticed they're also selling the hot ticket Nightmare Before Christmas popcorn bucket here at Cool Ship. It probably has a shorter line. So if you want that popcorn bucket, you can check it out here too. The fireworks at the Not So Scary Halloween Party are the Not So Spooky Spooktacular. They are part projection show, part fireworks, and they also have a very cool gigantic puppet of Jack Skellington that comes out on the castle stage. So when you're picking where you want to watch the fireworks, you're going to have to make some choices. Do you want to see Jack Skellington? Then you're going to need to be closer to the castle. But you're not really going to see all the fireworks because you're going to be too close to the castle to see behind it. If you don't care about Jack Skellington, then you can stand back. It is uh, not the full 360 fireworks, but they are the perimeter fireworks that go wider around the sides. And there are projections on the castle, like I was saying. My preferred place to stand is kind of towards the back of the hub, so you can see the projections fine, but mostly you're focusing on the fireworks. In my opinion, if you're closer to the castle than Walt Disney and Mickey, you're too close. things first. The music at the Halloween party slaps. I don't know if there's a Disney Parks playlist somewhere of this. I should look because it's amazing. Second of all, the fireworks happened. I walked up like 15 minutes before they started and I was able to get a great spot. Just make sure that you are standing where the cast members tell you to. And it's not my favorite fireworks show. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why we need skeletons dancing to Mary Poppins and ghosts dancing to princess music as if we don't hear that music in every show every other time of year. Like, could we not get more Halloween music, please? Maybe I'm just bitter and I miss Hallowishes, which was the superior fireworks version. Regardless, it's fireworks at the Halloween party. You should see it. And the Jack Puppet is really, really cool. So watch that. Now I'm headed in to meet Mickey. Finally gonna get a second to say thank you for inviting me to his party. And then it's parade time. Hi, Mickey. You look so nice. Yeah, you clean up so well. Thank you for having me to your Halloween party. I've had a really nice time. Yes, thank you. I had to come say thanks before I see you in the parade. Yeah, I'm sure you gotta go get dressed for that soon. Thank you, Mickey. Oh, like this? Okay. I love it. Thanks, Mickey. Bye. Met Mickey, he is adorable as always. And now I am headed to watch the second Boo to You parade. And this, friends, is why I tell you to watch the second parade. Look at this. The parade's gonna step off in 15 minutes and there are literally front row seats right here on Main Street. Now, I previously said Frontierland was my favorite place to watch the parade because Main Street gets more crowded, especially for the first one. But Max Goof, dressed as Powerline, kicks off the parade on Main Street only and he does a little dance party with the audience and i'm obviously trying to get down with max as power lines also new this year they've added in some other characters to the parade festivities of course you've got your classics like the headless horseman who rides through prior to the parade weather permitting you've got mickey and the gang and all their characters you've got the grave diggers you've got the ghost from haunted mansion the hitchhiking ghost you've got the ballroom dancer ghost you've got the pirates but this year they've added some more villains and and they are finally blessing us here in Walt Disney World with Minnie, Clarabelle, and Daisy dressed as the Sanderson sisters. I'm literally so excited I'm going to cry. I've never seen these costumes in person. And while you can't meet them like you can in California, they're going to be in the parade. I can't handle it. But also, I think Ursula's in the parade this year. It's what they said. So... <laughs> He's the leader of Halloween fear. Beware, the headless horseman is here. 
Y'all, I'm so excited right now. Both, both parties I went to last year, it was a little rainy, so he wasn't able to ride for safety. I haven't seen him in years. Max Goof just came by, but sadly he only made one stop on his dance party. He stopped kind of right in front of the confectionery and then went off stage that way. And even though I asked like four cast members which direction he would go and they all suggested he would go this way, he did not. So I advise you, if you definitely, definitely, definitely will be so upset and cry, you won't see Max Goof. Stand closer to the confectionery. But also as a pro tip, you can meet Max Goof as a meet and greet now in Hollywood Studios. Regardless, our night is still great and we are going to see the parade any minute now. Mickey's Booty You Parade so much. It is easily my favorite parade I've ever seen in Walt Disney World. They added new characters. Yes, one of them is Ursula and Flotsam and Jetsam, and sure, she's a nightmare. But they also added Horace and Jasper driving Cruella, the cards with the Queen of Hearts, and most importantly, Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle dressed as the Sanderson sisters. So you gotta see the parade, and I again highly recommend seeing the second one. And now, for the final spook of the evening, the Midnight Hocus Pocus Villain Spelltacular. The Hocus Pocus Villain Spelltacular is the show on the castle stage. It is scheduled for three times a night, but one of those times is at midnight, which is when the party ends. So you can watch the last show with one, most likely the least amount of people watching it, and two, the 10, 15 minutes of the show, you don't have to worry about fitting that into the already busy party. You can end your night with Hocus Pocus, which is undeniably the best Halloween movie of all time. I am not taking questions right now. Another Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party in the books, y'all. I just love this event. I'm maybe gonna cry because the last time I came last year, which was the first official Mickey's Not So Scary after the pandemic, 
I didn't get to see the full parade with the Headless Horseman or the full Hocus Pocus show because of the rain. And to see both of those pieces of entertainment in their full glory, especially with the new elements, I just love this event so, so much. Now people ask us all the time if these events are worth it. It's hard to say. I know they're expensive, especially when you get to that $200 a night per person that adds up quick when you are a party of more than one. But I really think the events are so much fun. You definitely have to decide. Do you want to do rides? Do you want to focus on those low wait times? Or do you want to focus on characters? All how long the character lines were throughout the night. Or do you want to focus on the entertainment or candy or snacks? You kind of got to pick and choose, but you can get a lot done on a party night, especially if you come in at four. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is an event I look forward to every single year, and I'm glad that it was just as fun as I remembered, if not more. Tried some really good snacks this year. I was very impressed with the snacks. Glad they added some savory dishes, some more unique dishes. I had a great time, and hopefully this was helpful as well. If you are coming to the party to help kind of show you what to expect, some pro tips. Again, see the second parade if you can. Stand behind the Walt statue for fireworks. Oh, I just had a great time tonight and I hope you did too. We've got a lot more Halloween fun in store for you. We've got Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. We're headed to the West Coast for all of their spooky season as well. Make sure you're following along. What kind of spooky events do you want to see? Let us know that as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly and it has been beautiful. Bye.